Hey everyone, welcome back to another Nova tutorial here on my channel. I am Boomer, your host, and today we're going to go through things all related to power upgrades for all of our power machines, as well as some charging machines and a little bit of automation. Now you're asking, why in the world are you recording when it's raining, right? Not exactly the greatest thing. Well, we kind of need to to start with. First thing we're going to get into today is a lightning exchanger. This is designed to exactly that, turn lightning into power. And what we do is we connect a vanilla rod to the top of it. Now, normally you would have placed the exchanger, put the rod in the top, and then you're good to go. So while we're waiting for a lightning strike at hopefully a relatively safe distance, we're going to talk about the exchanger. By default, it starts with a 10 million joule capacity, and it has upgrade options. So we can start with the efficiency upgrade, which is how much power we get out of the hit. So by default, whatever one lightning strike hits us with, if we upgrade to the maximum of 10, that lightning strike will be worth almost 10 times as much power as it was without those upgrades. We can also upgrade the energy. In other words, how much energy the lightning receptor now holds. So you can see we did get hit by a lightning strike. Now a normal lightning strike without any of the upgrades was roughly between 730 and 850,000 joules. We're still going off of one because of all those upgrades. I'm expecting it to stop somewhere around 7 million. So while that is running, we're going to go ahead and pull the efficiency. You can pull them out one at a time by left clicking or right clicking. Shifting will pull them all out at once. So we just pulled all the upgrades out. It's still going. That was one heck of a lightning strike with all those upgrades. So currently you can see we're going at 5,000 joules per tick. Not a bad way to do it. But if we have all the efficiency upgrades in, let's put them back in and let's see just how. Okay. So the efficiency was from the original power source. All right. So we'll pull those out. Now, we're also going to use the wireless charger. There is a regular charger that works just like a slime fun charging bench, but you can store the power and take it with you. The wireless charger also allows you to wirelessly charge a jetpack. You can charge it in the charger or you can charge it wirelessly while you're flying around. So let's take our wireless charger. It has no power. The power that is inside of the lightning exchanger will be instantly transferred down here. By default, we have 1 million joules of power. We also have upgrades as well. So we can upgrade the speed at which the power is processed 10 times. We can upgrade the energy efficiency in order to how much power per tick is converted. And we can also increase the range in which the wireless charger works. So if I go to the maximum range, and if we want to see it, we'll bring it up to level 14. And we'll show the area. We'll go ahead and turn the weather off. And you'll be able to see this is how big of an area it covers now if you're building in creative okay great you might want to bring one or two of these along with you or flying with your jetpack so it stays constantly charged just make sure you've got a power source going up we've got our jetpack on it's fully charged let's switch views just so you can see hey look at that it even has animation right so we can fly around anywhere in here and you can see the bar on the right the red one shows we are fully charged but if I proceed outside of this charging area, I'm going to start losing power here. And as you can see, my jetpack is starting to lose power. But if I want to recharge it, no problem. Come back in within a safe area. And there we go. After about a second or two, it recognized that we're in. Fully recharged. We can keep going. I really like this one. This one's really cool. Like I said, it's almost creative speed. It's just a tiny bit slower but it is fully controlled flight. All right, let's touch back down. And again, if I didn't mention it, the wireless charger, once it's fully charged, you can pick this power up and go with you anywhere. So if you upgrade it to the maximum storage of 10 million joules, your creative building, you might get three, four, five minutes of flight time, depending you know, if you fall in or out of it. You can also configure uh, power coming into it from any side. Or in this case, the lighting receptacle is right on top. You don't even have to use cables. You can simply connect it. Now, I did mention the other charger. We'll come over to that. Same thing. It has the same type of uh, upgrades. 
No, nope, I'm sorry, that's the wireless one. Here we go. We still have the upgrades here of speed and energy. You don't have range, but for the speed again, how fast that the fuel is being sent or the energy is being sent in and how efficiently is it being used. Both very cool and both again, this one can also be picked up with the power that is stored. Now, we do have a few other power generators that we haven't talked about. Besides the lightning rod, we have the windmill. Windmill is a basic, no frills, no major, you know, things. It holds 10,000 joules in comparison. Now, it does have some upgrade potential. You can do 10 efficiency upgrades and you can do 10 energy upgrades. The transfer rate on this is one joule per second, or per tick, excuse me, so 20 per second. When you upgrade it, it goes up to 10 joules per second. Excuse me, 10 joules per tick, 200 per second. So it is a much slower, but again, it's wind generation. It's not going to be fancy. Just to give you an idea here, we're going to flip back in the creative. So you can see I've got it fully upgraded, and it's only going up at the rate of 10 joules per tick. And it pulled the entire 10,000 joule buffer into the power cell. So that'll go for a while before it's completely full. Let's move on. Here we have our furnace generator. This runs off of lava. It also has some upgrade options. We can upgrade speed, we can upgrade efficiency, and we can upgrade energy. So speed, again, is the power, uh, excuse me, the speed at which power is transferred from the fuel. So when I put in a lava bucket, how fast does it drain that lava bucket out? Then the efficiency is how long does that fuel burn? In other words, it's like a time extender. It allows to uh, provide more power while going through it slower. So it lasts longer, you get more power overall. And then the energy upgrade is how much will the unit itself store? So by default, it would hold uh, 10,000. If we have full upgrades, it would go to 100,000. But as you can see, we do have lava buckets running right now at 80 joules per tick is the rate. If we were to increase the speed, go to the maximum setting, we are now going at 800. Pretty decent. And we've fully automated this. So here's what's cool. This is where Slime Fun and Nova come together. If you have the extra tools add-on from Slime Fun and you're running the vaporizer, I'm sorry, you don't even need a vaporizer. You don't even need extra tools, just a crucible, just the electric crucible. You can produce lava, send it to a chest through either cargo or some other option. And then we can configure it to be pulled into the furnace gener generator automatically. And then we can store it in a fuel cell. So you have the ability to create a, a good amount of power effortlessly once it's up and running. So there's one of our first integrations that we've been able to save from Slime Fun with Nova. When I build this on the server that I've been getting ready, um, this will be one of the things that we're gonna do is incorporating Slime Fun and Nova wherever as much as possible to integrate these two awesome add-ons or plugins. And then what I've also done is I've set a filter in this cable to pull out the empty buckets. Now, if I didn't put the filter in, it would also pull out the lava buckets. So instead, by just pulling out the empty buckets, as they get used, it brings the empty buckets over here. And then I could pull them from there, send them back to my, my uh, electric crucible, and keep making lava over and over. I love it. I'm, I'm going to have so much fun when we set this up. All right, on to power. So our solar generators also have upgrades efficiency and energy so in this case efficiency for the solar is again how much it transfers per tick and the energy upgrade is how much is the unit store by default the uh, unit holds 10,000 it's not a lot so if you go all 10 upgrades that'll be 100,000 joules that it can store and then of course we can speed up the rate at which it goes now I did test already with all four different cables will that change at all the power speed rate and it does not change the rate Everything for power is going to be determined by the efficiency and speed uh, and those upgrades will determine the rates at which they come out. But we are going to talk about the power cells. The ultimate, this one holds, this is a boomer sized power cell. It holds 1 billion joules. 
The Elite Power Cell holds 100 million, the Advanced 10 million, and the Basic 1 million. These are just like capacitors inside a slime fund. All right, so our basic starts at 37 joules per tick without any upgrades on a solar generator. If we were to start adding the um, efficiency upgrades, so let's see, we got all 10. Going from 37, we're now transferring 360. So it's almost 10 times. All right, now we've got our advanced power cell. Again, same thing, you can see the cables don't matter. We would have to add more of the uh, energy upgrades. Whoops, I don't need 20. And let's put the efficiency on there as well. So now it stores 100,000 and it's moving 360 joules per tick. Our elite power cell holds 100 million joules of power. And then, like I said, our boomer size one holds 1 billion. I love that. That's just a lot of raw power. The nice thing about these as well, let's flip back into creative. I mean, survival. Let's pick it up. Now, in Slime Fun, when you mine a capacitor, the power doesn't come with you. Here in Nova, it does come with you. So again, it's a common theme that we've seen that they were very consistent. Uh, Brett and the rest of the dev teams were very consistent in what happened to different machines with the power. Every one of them that I've run into, they all pick up the power and run with it. Now, as far as generators, when you are going to pick them up, now, I don't have enough power in any of these yet because I don't think we've had enough time to fill one of these. No. Nope. So we'll break that to stop power from going in there. You'll see the solar generator has 10,000 ticks. If we mine it up, do you think we got the power? Yes. Even a solar panel, even that generator has a 10,000 joules stored into it. Pretty sweet. All right, so I believe that is everything that we've got here for today in power. And if I miss something, I apologize. If somebody who's been playing with Nova realized, hey, Boomer, we missed something, that's great. We'll talk about it next episode. Leave me a comment. I'm really curious to see for those of you who have been playing with Nova, what you like about it, what you'd like to see. Uh, there are currently no add-ons for Nova, but I believe that's on the roadmap for down the uh, future. I thought I saw uh, that that is something that they're hoping to do in the future for uh, any add-on devs that would love to uh, give it a shot. We'll look forward to that day for now. There's still a lot to do here. I'm looking forward to getting into all of it. But always, guys, thanks for watching. And remember, man, go Boomer. This is, this is Nova. 